have you been having issues with conceiving you've tried several months and you're finding it difficult to conceive in this video i'm going to list out some tests okay some fertility tests that you're going to need to take at least these tests are going to guide you in knowing where the problem is coming from after running these tests you'll be able to identify what the problem is and why you're having difficulty with conceiving and after running all these tests and you find out everything is okay everything is normal and probably what you have is what we call unexplained infertility and there are other things you can also do about that hello guys what's up and welcome back this is everything health with nasdera in this channel we get to discuss different topics related to health if you're seeing this face for the first time i am nurse chidera cynthia i am a registered nurse registered midwife registered public health nurse and a bachelor of nursing science degree holder currently practicing here in nigeria if you're interested in this topic keep watching I'm going to list out all the necessary tests you're going to need to run to identify the reason why you're having difficulty with conceiving and make sure to watch to the end of this video because towards the end I'm going to use my whiteboard to list out all these tests and then list out the normal values for each of them so when you run any of these tests you can refer back to this video and check all the values that I've put out and then you can use that to know whether your test is normal or not normal if it's not normal there is no need to panic once you see your doctor you guys are going to work towards that particular problem and find a way around it so it's important to run all these tests and know the reason why you're having difficulty with conceiving and then you can know what exactly is the problem and you can treat that problem so when you treat that problem you will be asked to go back home and try naturally and you're going to conceive so the first test we're going to be talking about is chlamydia chlamydia is a sexual transmitted infection that can affect fertility you can take this test at any time You're just going to need to go to the hospital cervical swab is going to be taken and the test will be run urine can also be used as an alternative to test for chlamydia next test is fsh and lh fsh and lh are two reproductive hormones that shows the communication between the brain and the ovaries the brain sends fsh to make the ovaries to grow and mature and then it sends lh to make the ovaries to release the mature egg and this is simply ovulation so at a certain time in the cycle the fsh and lh is supposed to be elevated so when these two hormones are low when they are not elevated at any point in your cycle that indicates that there is a problem with ovulation this test can be taken between cycle day two to cycle day five of the woman's menstrual cycle another test is prolactin this hormone is responsible for breastfeeding in breastfeeding women or pregnant women so when this hormone is is abnormally high in women who are not pregnant or women who are not breastfeeding then it can interfere with ovulation and this prolactin test can be taken at any time of the cycle the next test we're going to be talking about is progesterone is a hormone that is released by corpus lithium that is after ovulation have occurred the place that egg was released from actually starts secreting progesterone and this progesterone just makes the lining of the endometrium to thicken and prepare itself for implantation to occur and to carry the pregnancy through till delivery so progesterone simply indicates that ovulation have occurred so simply put progesterone helps to know if the woman have ovulated in that particular cycle and the test is usually done seven days before your next cycle that is seven days before your next period you also do a thyroid function test abnormality with the thyroid gland can prevent menstruation so it's part of the test you're supposed to take anti-malarian hormone amh is another important test to run as it shows the amount of eggs left in the woman's ovaries and this test can be done at any time of the menstrual cycle another important test is pelvic ultrasound scan this is just going to help to detect abnormalities with the uterus the fallopian tubes and the ovaries to check if you have five Fibroids, PCOS, scarring, endometriosis, and the rest of them. So it's just going to help to detect and outline and see if everything is okay. Although that test is not going to be invasive, so it might not really outline if there are blockages in the fallopian tubes, but it's going to give an idea of what is going on down there and there are other invasive tests that you're going to need to do 
but infertility is not gender based it goes both ways so before having to go through with these highly invasive procedures you'll be advised to have your partner run a seminal fluid analysis to check his sperm sperm count sperm morphology motility everything about his sperm to be sure everything is actually okay from his own end before having to go through with these highly invasive procedures this invasive test includes hsg hysterosalpingogram it is actually a procedure done to check if the fallopian tubes are actually open to be sure that there is no blockage which is preventing the sperm from reaching the egg to fertilize the egg so basically the procedure is going to outline your fallopian tubes check and see if they are open and they check for polyps and all of that the test can be done between cycle day 7 and cycle day 10. another one is transvaginal scan this is just like ultrasound scan but this time around it is actually invasive because an ultrasound probe is going to be inserted into the woman's vagina to assess the uterus the fallopian tubes the ovaries and check and see if everything is okay then another one is cervical exam just to check if the cervix is open a tiny instrument is going to be inserted to see if it can pass through the cervix if it doesn't pass through the cervix then that means the cervix is tightly closed and if the cervix is tightly closed Lose. there is no way sperm will be able to pass through it and go to the fallopian tube to fertilize the egg the cervix is an organ that connects the vagina to the uterus if it's tightly closed there is no way sperm will be able to get through it and go and look for the egg and fertilize the egg i'm going to show you guys the values of some of these hormones that indicates what is normal and what is not normal so here are some of the tests that i talked about when you're done taking this test you can refer back to this video and cross check your results with what you have here and see if you're on the right track this is progesterone prolactin fsh lh testosterone thyroid stimulating hormone and anti-malarian hormone so this is it for now if you enjoyed this please do well to give this video a huge thumbs up leave a comment in the comment section subscribe to my channel if you haven't subscribed yet and turn on your notification because i have more informative and educative videos coming your way on this channel stay tuned see you in my next one bye